Shit, my friendly eye, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Caitlin Anwin. For anyone who's new here, and let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. And I am continuing in the Wetland Zoo, but I'm going to be doing a little bit of adaptation for the zoo. I'm going to change the name of the zoo to Wetlands Conservation Park instead of Wetlands Safari Park. So the Conservation Park and the Wetlands Park can be kind of melded together and I can use the same map but change it around slightly. I was thinking for the conservation side that we would kind of dry up the wetlands. Wetlands are usually created with heavy rain so maybe for the conservation side there hasn't been any rain in a while and the water's kind of dried up. I still wanted a little bit of water but nowhere near as deep as what we have for the wetland side. Went in and tried to add some little shallow puddles so there's still some water left over it's not completely dried up but most of the land now is kind of dry i decided to put the conservation entrance on this higher terrain like what used to be an island because i wanted this to be like a solid structure i didn't want the kind of not realistic aspect of putting a solid structure where you would technically get flooding. My plan for this is going to be a potting shed. That was my inspiration. So I was having a look at different potting shed shapes and trying to get something a little bit more interesting looking than just a regular shed shape, like a box with a little pitched roof. I found this one where it had like an angled window Kind of cut into the walls and i really like playing around with different angles and stuff this wood texture i'm not going to keep it was just kind of a template just to see the sizes because walls are easier to place down than panels are and so i uh, wanted to go with the windows first because that was like my favorite part really so i wanted to see whether i could actually do these windows because <laughs> sometimes it looks like it's possible uh, but you just don't have the objects for it. But luckily I found this triangular glass panel that was an off-grid prop instead of an on-grid prop. So uh, I could rotate it and have it angled to fit in with the angled windows. But I wanted to use the new conservation items. We got a new pack, we got new items, and of course I am always super excited to use new build items. I love these new grass roof panels, and it gives that little bit of colour into the build. And once I made the roof to be able to decorate a little bit easier, I just moved it up and had it floating around the sky a little bit just get it out of the way and i've been watching grand designs and that's usually uh <laughs> always inspires me to build with different techniques and one of the houses the cladding on this house was built using a japanese technique i'll put the technique on the screen because i'm not quite sure how to pronounce it but it's like a wood charring technique to preserve the wood they would like burn the outer layer of the wood to create like different shades of the charred texture and it doesn't quite come off the same way in game of course <laughs> but uh, I really love this wood charring technique and of course it doesn't use any extra chemicals in the wood at all so it'd be really good for the environment because I want to really focus on what's good for the environment for the conservation pack. I also saw in real life a fence or a wall painted in different shades of the same colour in a kind of random pattern and that's kind of what I wanted to do here. What I was thinking was maybe these wood pieces had been collected, it had a different use beforehand and whoever's like running the zoo has collected different pieces of wood from different places to reuse those wood pieces for this potting shed. I used the doorway wall as a template to create the arch entrance in the actual shed to 
let the guests enter into the zoo. <laughs> and then changed some of the wall panels from the two meter long to the one meter long size, just to be able to create a nice straight doorway. I wasn't sure whether to do the accent color, the pure black or go for pure white instead, because even the darker shade on the wall panels isn't quite black it's like the color just before black and i like the white but i think the black makes it feel a little bit more modern like it's more of a new build using old pieces it's kind of what i want to do with this like upcycling and then i'm adding in my guest spawner into the potting shed and the entrance gate and I just align the path to a grid so it'd be nice and square because I want to line this path with a nice little wall make it feel a bit cosier. In my reference image they had these beautiful flowers in the window of the potting shed and so of course I wanted to add my own tropical bright flowers into the potting shed to contrast all of the grayscale walls. And I was thinking maybe like tropical plants in the potting shed or like in the greenhouse because this is a temperate zoo so the more tropical climate flowers wouldn't really necessarily grow that well outside. They'd need to be in a more warm tropical environment so putting them in the greenhouse makes more sense than having them outside and I wanted to kind of enclose a garden space between the guest spawner and the guest entrance gate still using the same wood panelling technique but I wanted it to be kind of shorter but I will kind of paint these so they stand out from the grayscale potting shed I want a nice bright colour for the wall and I saw these like wall plant decorations using an old tyre and I thought that was really cool. It's good to use something or reuse something that's no longer useful, like a tyre. So I've created it into a little planter. It's the base game tyre because uh, it was a lot bigger than the new conservation tyre and I would really, really love more small plants. The conservation pack has new uh, potted or pots that you could put plants in, but there's just not a lot of teeny tiny little plants. I had to get a little creative with decorating these tires. So I got the smallest classic base game flowers, the flexi colour ones, and then I used the leafy plants that are in the aquatic tag. So you can go for aquatic plants but are not from the aquatic pack. The base game aquatic plants. I did use these for seaweed in my California sea lion habitat and the underwater part of the otters habitat too. I also saw my many hours of scrolling through Pinterest pallets like wooden pallets shipping pallets being reused for lots of different things in allotments and in gardens which I can totally get because I've also used wooden pallets in my garden my mum actually has them tied our wheelie bins <laughs> and they're all like painted nicely it's like a cover for the wheelie bins but the original palette that we see here. That's an Australia pack item and I wanted this build to be base game and conservation pack. So I'm using the Australia pack palette as a template. So I'm not necessarily going to keep the palette object but I'm going to use it to create my own wooden palette out of the conservation pack items and you can use the same technique with lots of different items that you would like if you wanted to do a limited packs build. I've also used this technique for blueprint items as well. If I find a really nice blueprint that goes really nicely with my build but it doesn't necessarily fit with the pack items that I want to use like the limited packs. I've also like kind of recreated their blueprint using different items and the first thing that I wanted to make with my palettes <laughs> is uh, another planter 
Again, I use the same small flowers and the little aquatic leaves. And the little flowers are good because you can recolor them and make them kind of look like different flowers. But it's just a shame that there's not more of a variation than these one type of classic flower. Because I'd scroll through the whole nature tab with all of the flowers. I thought I'd look through everything and uh, I couldn't find anything small enough that would look like leaves. But then I remembered some plants or some things that look like plants are in the construction tab, like the new vegetables. So I've used carrots as the different leaves and the different textures of leaves and they do kind of poke out of the back <laughs> on the uh, tire planters but that's just because the wall that I'm, I've technically used is a lot thinner than a regular wall but the carrots actually do give like a different colour green for the leaves and a different texture for the leaves as well so it gives it a little bit more of a variation for the planters which I was really happy with and I wasn't fully sure what colour to paint the wall but I was still thinking of doing the same technique maybe the zoo had lots of different shades of leftover paint that they wanted to use up or they'd bought samples of paint instead of buying a whole huge tin of paint to look after the environment however which way you want to think of it they didn't have enough paint to fully paint the wall one color and to easily recolor this without deciding on a color to start with i separated the planks of wood into each shade and if you want to know how to use groups and split from group add to group all of that i do have a short on how groups work but i ended up settling on blue to tie in with the blue of the wetland side and have a nice bright color to contrast the potting shed I was thinking maybe green to go with like the recycling upcycling environment theme but I didn't think the plants would stand out nice enough against a green background and to also go with the color scheme that I done for the wetland side I painted the front of the palette a uh, nice bright orange because that was one of the accent colors so I just want different features on each different section of the wall to kind of introduce the guests to the theme of the zoo. To go with the flowers, I wanted to do a bee mural. So I started with the climbing planters and created a honeycomb pattern and used the solar lights, which also goes with the conservation theme in the center of them was well, a little hint to what I did for the sun base habitat these little bee signs so cute I love them so I dotted them around like the bees were flying in and out of their beehive to collect the pollen and to hide this really metallic gate I wanted to go with like the reusing upcycling theme again and I was just thinking like old shipping container, not like a shipping container, but like old shipping boxes that have probably just been stacked out of the way. Uh, there's not really much of a use to them, but you don't want to throw them out, of course. So I thought if I just stack a couple of these boxes, they're from the Indian theme. They're base game prop items. I, I always want to call them clutter, but they're like prop items. So I didn't have them exactly matching, I've rotated them slightly differently on both sides and they also have extra clutter items on top, like they're ready to be put somewhere else. And another use for my wooden pallets is raised planter beds. That goes with the conservation theme, like growing your own food instead of it being shipped from different countries. I don't want it to be like an entire farm. I just want it to be like a cute little allotment. So I've just got a couple of different items. I got the cauliflower and the carrots in this just teeny little allotment. I might have a little bit more fun and create a farm for maybe something else. I was thinking maybe for the wild horse doing like a little barn and a farm for that, but is that like too 
predictable. You know me, I wanna do things that just make no sense most of the time. <laughs> to tie in like the theme of the bees and the flowers with the new insect house, I wanted to do wild flower beds. So another idea that I've seen out and about for butterflies and bees and all different insects. They've sprinkled wildflower seeds in certain parts near parks and things for the butterflies and the bees and the small insects. So there's nice little patches of really colorful wild flowers. I think it's a really cool idea. It's really cheerful as well. Like I love the different colors. And of course I wanted to use all the new wild flowers that we had with the conservation pack. And of course we needed to add some sunflowers in. And I thought that this spot in between the two wildflowers, just along the wall of the potting shed was perfect. And I don't know whether this is a myth or is just a, a thing with sunflowers, but they always point towards the sun. The sunflower head will rotate and follow the sun throughout the day. So this was the nicest lighting forward onto the potting shed so I rotated the sunflowers to kind of look like they were facing where the sun was angled so they weren't completely straight and just facing forward they kind of looked like they were angled towards the sun and lastly what is a potting shed without tools to actually pot plants and look after your garden so I wanted to add like a little utility shelf in the potting shed where the keepers or the grounds keepers for the zoo would keep all of their gardening tools. I wanted to keep to the colour scheme of the wall outside so I used all the different shades of blue and to make sure that my tools were completely in line with their little hooks. The easiest way of making sure that they line up nicely together is place your hook down first and then use control Z to, no, control X to advance duplicate the hook and then select one of the tools you want on the hook. And then they're nicely in line with each other. And a little watering can and a bucket on the shelf just to add a few extra tools and that little trowel. I love the trowel, so cute. But yeah, this was really fun. I like very highly conceptualized is that a word i don't know it's a big theme to this focus on upcycling conservation recycling reusing that type of thing very environmentally friendly to go with the conservation pack because not only do we want to make sure that animals aren't going extinct but we kind of want us not to go extinct too right <laughs> We want to look after this planet so we don't lose all of the beautiful animals like the Amur leopard. Oh, so beautiful. Um, <laughs> and the wild horse, but we kind of don't want to go extinct ourselves either. So you want to look after the environment and be use conservation for our planet as well as the animals living on the planet. If you have any ideas for upcycling kind of objects, upcycling techniques that I can use in the different builds and of course help me pick the first animal to build a habitat for as well from the conservation park. I'd like to start with one of those first. But yeah I'm gonna leave it off there. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you enjoyed the video smash that like button and if you haven't already and you would like to it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever i upload a new video i upload speed builds on wednesdays and shorts tutorials on saturdays thank you so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you next time goodbye